Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, this is going to be a really exciting episode and the reason for that is that I have a pile of AMD sheet metal laying here. I have a stripped to the bones 71 CUDA that needs a whole lot of help back here. And thank God we are finally in the process of starting to put panels back onto the car. So the front half is done as you guys have seen. In the last episode we did the rear seat pan that turned out really nice and then also i've got the trunk pan just kind of sitting in here it's just floating it's not screwed down or anything yet but we're going to go ahead we're going to get the rear trunk drops screwed onto the sides of that so that way we can center everything up we can fit the inner and outer wheelhouses to this thing and then we can also put our quarters over the top and the reason we're doing that and kind of that sequence is because there's so much structure taken out of this car and this rear tail panel can move about two inches or so, probably three if I push really hard. But if I end up welding the trunk pan to the rear frame rails, and then I weld the tail panel to that trunk pan, and it's off by even a quarter inch or a half inch, or you know, it could be possibly a lot more than that, every single panel on the back half of this car is gonna fit like absolute shit, okay? The wheelhouses aren't gonna fit the quarters right. The quarters definitely are not gonna fit the tail panel right. And yeah, we're in for a lot of trouble if we do that. So, you know, with a lot of this stuff, guys, the biggest thing, you just have to test fit everything. You take your time, you put it all together, you screw it all together so that way you can replicate that fit time after time after time after time. If you guys remember back to the 68 Charger build, which is over there, that one turned out pretty nice and that had a lot more metal pulled off the back of the car. And I test fit that car and pulled off those panels probably 15, 20 times. Just looking at it, make sure everything lines up, it's exactly where you want it to be before you even think about making any of this stuff permanent. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my impact, gonna grab a handful of screws, and we're going to get all of these panels fit up onto the car. All right guys, so I've got my inner and outer wheelhouses fit up and they're pretty close. Now since I've put in the passenger sign, I've done quite a bit of fiddling with this, but I've got this driver's side really close and I wanted to show you guys a few things. Now, it pays dividends to take your time here and make sure that everything lines up like it's supposed to so that way when we put our quarters over the top, hopefully everything lines up and it makes the entire process a lot easier, okay? So, to first start off with, there are these three holes here on both the inner and outer and in a perfect world they're going to line up in all three places on the wheelhouses well in this case they're not anywhere even remotely close to fitting and you know if you go ahead and, and do that the problem is where the transition is here between the two wheelhouses on the inside it's not going to line up and be a smooth transition so when you look here this one's fairly close these ones on the top and then also in the front the front one is nowhere remotely close and if you look here on the bottom you can see this little radius here at the top of that in theory, that should actually line up with the bottom of this big hole right there, okay? So it's a little bit off, and unfortunately with a lot of these aftermarket panels, the fitment, you're gonna have to do things. You're gonna have to tweak things, and it's not always gonna fit perfectly or fall into place. So what I have to do here, and even now as I sit here, I have to actually clock the inner wheelhouse slightly clockwise, and the reason being, you can see I've got a nice transition here down to my trunk drop. That all looks really, really nice, like it's gonna pull together nicely. But when I look on the inside here, and you can see that little bit of daylight, okay? You can see 
that this flange is gonna be a nightmare to weld and it's actually going to completely miss because my welds should be across right here. So what I need to actually do is rotate the inner slightly further and you can see when I do that, it should close this all up and it should actually fit really, really nice. And looking down here, even at the bottom, I've got plenty of space here where when this ends up moving up, I'm not gonna leave anything open or exposed on the inside of that. So we should be pretty good. Now right here on the front, you can see this all lines up really, really good there. So when I had the outer pretty much where I wanted it, I started clicoing it into place. Okay, so this is like a, uh, I wanna say it's a 3 16 or a uh, eighth inch hole. Yeah, it is an eighth inch hole and clicoed this into place into some key spots to make sure that uh, this goes exactly back to where I have it right now and we can replicate that every time. Damn, T-Bone, you look fresh in that AMG gear, dude. So now that I've done that, um, I'm gonna pull the whole thing back out again, clock the inner wheelhouse, and uh, yeah, I might even just be able to sneak away with just going like a half a hole and closing that hole up a little bit, and it should bring that nicely together. Now, this passenger side, I haven't touched it since I fit it up in here, and I wanna show you guys just still how much we need to mess with this. Now, it would be an absolute disaster to weld this in exactly where we have it here, <laughs> okay? The bottom lined up pretty close, okay? When you look at it from the top down, pretty close there, it still needs to go in a little bit. But you can see that this flange starts to sag down here, monster gap on the bottom side of that. And then you can see these holes here are supposed to be down here on this black section here. So what I'm gonna do, take the jack, lift that up. You can see I've got pretty good transition line here. But uh, we'll unclamp that, we'll lift that up, screw it into place, click out where we need to. And then the same thing down here, but you can see that that wheelhouse is actually pretty close to fitting on that flange and all the way around it looks pretty close, pretty nice all the way around. So little minor tweaks, little minor adjustments, but it all makes a massive, massive difference. And again, I wanna get this right, get it as close to where it needs to be so that way when we put the quarters on, it should be hopefully pretty easy. So let's make these adjustments, let's get these quarters on, and let's see how close we got the fitment right.
All right guys, so I've got the back half of the car pretty well pinned together here and I went ahead and clear coated it so that way it's going to be an exact fit when it comes to putting it all back together. But, you know, in general, the fitment across here, across our quarter, our door fitment's really, really nice all the way around. I've got really, really tight gaps on the inside here where the quarters meet the wheelhouses. That was a big problem on the charger that took a long time to, uh, <laughs> to get right. Now, on the back half of the car here, um, or the back corners of the car, on the Charger we had the balance corners, which are a real pain in the ass to get lined up. On this car, we've got these tail light um, corners, the tail panel corners. Now, never really seen a good video of somebody installing these, and they're gonna be a little bit tricky to weld in um, a little bit later, but basically there's a left and a right side. They're gonna go ahead and they're gonna fit around the radius here of the corner of the tail panel. They fit on the inside of our quarter panel, and then also they kind of fit this radius here along the side. And you've gotta kind of pull those in nice and tight, and they're gonna line up here on the corners just like that. So we've got those in on both sides. Really adds a lot of strength here. Adds a ton of strength to our tail panel. Everything along of our edges also lines up really nice. Now, with replacing so much metal here on the back, end of the car, okay? Especially with the rear frame rails, they're really hanging in thin air, okay? Now, if you had a frame jig, this would not be an issue, but obviously I don't. <laughs> so we've gotta make sure that the height at the back of our rear frame rails is correct. And to do that, unfortunately, I need a damn rear balance. I thought I had one, it was wrapped up, it just said balance on it with, uh, with some parts that I picked up. Of course, it was a front. So I had to order that from AMD, it's gonna be here in a few days. But what that's gonna make sure is that number one, that the spacing between the quarter panels at the bottom is exactly where it needs to be, just in case they need to be pulled in in either direction. But it's also going to make sure that I have the right amount of clearance here on the corners of this rear cross member, because as it sits right now, it would not fit. So what we're gonna have to do is that after I go ahead, I'm gonna weld the trunk pan in, just the bottom section, okay? Anywhere where the wheelhouse mounts around the trunk pan, we're not going to do. And also here on the bottom of the quarters, we're gonna wait for that. But uh, we'll go ahead, we'll get the rest of it welded in at the top of the frame rails. And then when that rear balance comes in, I can put my screw jacks underneath the corners here of the rear cross member, can lift those up to make sure we get good fitment overall. And then it'll allow me to pinch this tail panel against the backside of the rear trunk pan and uh, yeah, weld it in for one last time. So got some measurements uh, that I can definitely verify to make sure that the spacing between the lip of the tail panel and also the lip of the new trunk pan is, uh, is exactly where it needs to be. But most importantly, guys, measurements are great and all, but how do the panels actually fit? And with there being a lot of aftermarket sheet metal on the car, we're gonna have to make sure that number one, it fits good, okay? Because the measurements might not be exact. So with that rear balance, we're also going to test fit the rear bumper on this car, make sure it all lines up exactly where it needs to be, pin it together, weld it together, and wrap up the back half of this car. So I'm gonna grab some markers, gonna go ahead and trace out that trunk pan, get that all drilled out, and get the backside of uh, at least where our frame rails are welded to that trunk pan. So let's get to work.
right guys, now that I have the rear half of the sheet metal taken off the car, it's time to do whatever I can without the trunk pan in place. Because obviously once that gets in there, I'll just tell you right now, this trunk opening, a lot smaller than the charger. <laughs> I don't think my big ass is gonna be getting in that trunk pan and doing a ton of welding in there. So now's the time to go ahead and start addressing some of the surface rust. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my blaster lined up to get over here and knock all this out for me. So we're gonna do what we can right now with a wire wheel. We're gonna use some pour 15 metal prep, acid etch, neutralize, and go ahead and coat the inside of this with zinc phosphate. So that way we can just pour 15 this entire thing and not ever worry about rust again. So I'll just show you guys, I've actually gone ahead, I've already done the driver's side with the wire wheel to kind of show you how good this cleans up. Now, you know, when you first take a look at this, you can see a lot of it, scale, okay, we've got some rust issues in the typical places, okay, down here where all that rainwater collects in there, but, uh, but nothing super, super crazy. It gets a little crazy in the rockers there. Um, but I've gone ahead and wire wheeled the inside of this side and you can really see it knocks off that surface rust super super easy i think i spent maybe 10 minutes max um wire wheel and kind of the first half of this it turned out really really nice you guys and it's uh it's pretty smooth there also so looking at this side again you can see world of difference all i'm using here milwaukee grinder harbor freight special three inch um call these face pokers but um, you know what I'm talking about, the wire wheel there. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll go ahead, we'll knock out the rest of this with that wire wheel. I'm also gonna do the inside of the tail panel because it's kind of in that same shape. But man, you hit it with two seconds with that wire wheel and it blows all of that loose rust off of there and uh, creates a really nice surface that we can then go ahead and apply that pour 15 to. So we get the camera set up, let's knock this out and let's coat the inside of these panels. All right guys, so we got the back half here all coated in pour 15 and it looks fantastic. It is ready. 
to weld on the trunk pan and the rest of the panels on this car, with the exception of the rear quarters because we still have to section in the new rocker pieces. But you guys saw I did a lot more work than talking here over the last few minutes, so let's just take a look here at everything that's been done so far. Um, first off, went ahead, wire wheeled everything, and then I used the proper POR15 prep process, which many of you have pointed out that I've never done correctly. So it was new for me too, but it starts off, you degrease the panels first, and then you use their acid etch. And uh, be sure to get that all cleaned up because as you can see, it will leave a residue on the overspray that you have, or really anywhere that it's at. So we're gonna clean that up here later. But, um, but yeah, did all that. The panel is actually really cleaned up nicely. I washed all that up with water. Then I went in, punched out all of my holes here, put these all, all of our welding surfaces here and weld through primer so those are ready to go. And then I applied the POR15. Now, this does not need a top coat. Anytime that you're gonna put on the POR15 and you're gonna have uh, any sort of UV exposure or direct sunlight on those panels, okay, you need to make sure that you put on the uh, POR15 top coat as well with that. But, um, but yeah, use tape on my lines here. Got a little bit of bleed over, but nothing that we can't burn through with the welder, okay? And then, uh, yeah, put the POR15 on and it looks really, really nice. You guys can see here on the inside, it looks brand new, beautiful, nice and shiny. So where do we go from here? Well, the next thing to do guys is to start prepping out our trunk pan. We've got our wheelhouses and also the rear quarters that'll go on last obviously, but, uh, but everything is pretty much ready to go. And what I think I'm going to do is make you guys wait for the next video to see those pieces of metal go on. So don't wanna drag this out, don't wanna make it too long, and uh, just wanted to show you guys you know, the process for prepping the panels, getting them fit up, and then also getting everything ready to weld on and to finish up the back half of this car. So if you haven't done so yet, guys, hit that subscribe button. I have some gigantic news on this build that here in the next week or so, I am going to do a live stream when I have a few things arrive that uh, are really going to accelerate and change the face of this entire car. And I could not be more excited to share it with you guys. So if you can't tell, I'm pretty stoked about it. So take care guys. I'll see you again real soon. Yeah.